Chapter 47. Shake and go. Wing Commander, Jack called down the corridor, a note of panic creeping into his voice. Go ahead, squadron leader, came Grandpa's voice from around the corner. The Commandant is beginning to come too, sir. The next sound Jack heard was his grandfather knocking on the toilet door. Knock, knock. Will you hurry up in there, Trifle? Never wish a lady on the lavatory, barked Mrs Trifle from inside. Please, madam, ordered Grandpa. I've waited long enough for this. I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you very much. Just then the boy noticed the matron's limbs were snaking into life. Sir, he called out in desperation. The old man tried once again to hurry the old lady. Knock, knock, knock. Finished, she finally answered from the other side of the door. Typical, there's no paper. Would you be a darling and find me some? An absorbent kind, please. Can't abide the shiny white. There's no time, trifle. Grandpa was trying to be so polite, but from his tone of voice it was clear he was becoming increasingly irritated with the old lady now. What do you expect me to do? complained Mrs. Trifle. Just shake and go. That's what us men do. There was a silence for a short while before Mrs. Trifle announced in a chilly tone, Why, thank you. That's actually done the trick. The boy turned to see the two elderly escapees finally reappearing around the corner. Suddenly, Grandpa shouted, Squadron Leah! Look out! Jack spun around. Matron was now scrabbling to her feet and reaching out the prod in the boy's direction. Run! shouted Grandpa. The swine lunged her weapon at Jack like a sword. Electric balls shooting from the tip. Sparks flew onto the thick velvet curtains behind him. Immediately, they were set alight and flames licked the ceiling. Chapter 48, Inferno To escape the flames, Jack backed down the corridor. He reached Grandpa and Miss, Mrs Trifle. Together, the three hurried away from the fire. Mayton staggered after them, her body framed by the oncoming Inferno. The flames were moving fast, and soon they were catching up with her. Ah! cried Miss Swine, at the blazing heat. The fire was rapidly becoming out of control, devouring everything in sight. Flames leapt along the corridor in front of her. In an instant, Miss Swine had become trapped by the blaze. You take care, trifle old boy, ordered Grandpa. I should save the Commandant. What? Jack couldn't believe his ears. They may be the enemy, but an officer and a gentleman, is a, it is a matter of honour. I must try and save the Commandant. With that, the old man shielded his face from the flames with his arm and walked bravely towards Miss Swine. Commandant, he said, give me your hand. He stretched out his arm through the flames. Miss Swine reached out her hand to meet his. He grabbed it tight and smiled craftily. She grabbed it tight and smiled craftily at the old man. Take this, you gibbering old fool, she cried, as she lifted her cattle prod high into the air. Watch out, cried the boy. Bash! It was too late. Miss Swine had walloped Grandpa over the head with her cattle prod, knocking him unconscious to the ground. No! cried Jack. 